Hey everybody, welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I've got another video for you guys. I've got a homie, a compadre, a companion from Nerdy Blurb TV. I'm rocking his, his merchandise right now. Ryan, how the heck are you? Dude, super sick. Thanks for supporting the merch. I want merch from you so I can support it because I freaking love your channel. There it is. It's not on my head, so that doesn't change anything. I still want it. Thank you so much yeah. for, for letting <laughs> me be here today, dude. Yeah, dude. And you know what? Thank you so much um, for just being a part of the stuff of legend. You get your faithful friend and you're always helping out and, um, you know, collaborating, dude. I love having you with the, the summits and being on your channel. It's, it's always a good time with you, man. Dude, appreciate it. Glad to be here. Yeah, dude. And so we I want to jump right into it so we don't waste a whole lot of time. But with Spider-Man Far From Home, it's coming out very soon, right? And so I wanted to get your thoughts quickly on uh, first impressions from the trailers. So like, what are what are your, your thoughts, just the gist, your feelings um, coming out of Endgame and just um, like, what, what where does it take your mind when you watch those trailers? Man, okay, great question because right out of Endgame, the number one thing that I was just like huge question mark that I know has to be answered is that why the freak is everyone still the same age why is it what happened those those five those three five years i can't remember uh during yeah. the snap and and for some reason all of the spider-man cast is still the same I, I that's one thing and that's that's kind of a hard one i'm waiting for the movie on that maybe waiting on on a few movies to explain that but that was like the right. biggest one like everyone's fine everyone's the same nothing kind of changed but here's another huge one for me is that no way mysterio is a good guy no way yeah. is he a good yeah. guy he's sitting there in the trailer we're supposed like he looks dope by the way first off first oh impressions, my gosh he looks amazing awesome dude way His cool suit Oh, dude, I am so glad they gave him the fishbowl. If they yeah. didn't give him that freaking dome, I was gonna riot, dude. Like there would be rioting in the streets. Yeah. I was not gonna be happy. Like if they just did like some like some like techno mask or something like they did for um, Scarlet Scarlet Witch's. Uh, I'm sorry, Scarlet Johansson's Black Widow in um, what was it? Yeah, Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. If they did that, I was gonna be absolutely pissed. Yeah, but I they can, went full fishbowl. I love it. I love that. As soon as I saw him, I knew who he was uh, from the first teaser trailer. I was like, dude, we're getting yeah. Mysterio. Awesome. But there's no way they're going to make him like make us be sympathetic towards him. I mean, I'm sure they're going to warm, warm everybody who's not familiar with him, warm him up to, to like warm the character up to them and then just rip their hearts out. No way he's a good guy. Right. That I mean, that is that, that would be blasphemy in its finest when it comes to uh, comic book superheroes and all of that kind of stuff. So first yeah. impressions on that for sure. Mysterio, what like you're not fooling anybody. You're definitely no. a bad guy. Yeah. But like crazy thing is that everybody, including myself, because I made a trailer reaction uh, with uh, with my cousin on on this. Uh, and and when they put out the multiverse, we lost our minds, dude. Everyone lost their minds. But the thing yeah. is, is that we've had a multiverse in the MCU for so long. Like, I mean, we saw it in Doctor Strange. We definitely saw it in in Avengers Endgame. But like, we saw right. it as far away as Doctor Strange, you know. And and but like yeah. the fact that they're actually addressing it and and that they're pulling from it and Mysterio is actually out of it. I mean, just crazy, crazy. It's just. It showed so much potential, and it made me think of crazy theories that yeah. may possibly become true, may not, but that's why we're here. We're going to talk about them. Yeah, dude. I wanted to run a couple things past you on that same note. I mean, first, like you, you mentioned a couple things there. First, with Mysterio being good or bad, no, no, no. He's clearly bad. Like, If right. you know anything about the comics, if you know anything about the character, he is a deceiver. He's basically like if you were to take the Riddler but make him a little bit more technologically based and not not as heightened intelligence, like just a little bit normal but very, very crafty. Right. Um, and that's that's who he is. He's the great deceiver of Spider-Man's realm. So him and him and Chameleon, and there's a lot of theories about that too. Um, Mysterio has never really been the guy pulling the strings. Mysterio has always been a guy that's either operating on his own or he's hired by someone else. So I have a strong theory 
we know that Nick Fury was snapped and then the unsnapping happened. Mm -hmm. So he is, he is back because he's unsnapped. He wasn't killed, but was he, was the Nick Fury that was snapped? Was that actually Nick Fury or was that a deep cover? Someone else like chameleon for instance, right? Chameleon yeah. is someone that has been known to pull the strings from time to time. He often does work for other people, but like he gets contracted out. But I think that if chameleon is maybe in the mix, we already know that there's plenty of villains in the Spider-Man universe. This is something that I think has been the biggest boon for the Spider-Man franchise in the MCU over the other franchises yeah. is that the movie doesn't focus on one or two villains. It shows that there's countless villains in the MCU. There was six villains, six notable villains in Spider-Man Homecoming, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have, if I, if I can name them off the top of my head, I think it was the Jackson Bryce shocker that gets killed. There was Herman Schultz shocker, which is a shocker we all know and love, uh, except they gave the, the shocker costume to the other guy. But, <laughs> but uh, then you have Vulture, who's the main villain. You have Tinkerer. You have um, the Prowler, and then you have Scorpion towards the middle and the end. So, a lot of guys, now Scorpion's obviously not Scorpion yet, but he's um, he's Matt Gargan. So he's there, he's getting set up for Far From Home and after. Right, and, so, on, and on that note, not to jump on you, but like, like they're also hinting, I mean, even at the end of Homecoming, they're hinting that they're still gonna be prominent in in the universe. I mean, we saw Vulture yes. in, in, we saw Michael Keaton in jail approached by Scorpion and just like, we need to go get him. And he's like, nah, I'm good. But like, clearly Scorpion is, we're going to see him again. Like, I definitely think that's going to happen. Right. And the Sinister Six is not a singular team over the years. It's been brought, it's been brought together by various people. Dr. Octopus has done it. The Green Goblin has done it. Um, Wilson Fisk has done it. Yes. There's been so many people that have brought it all together. Uh, Craven, I think, is even at one time led the team. But you have, like, for instance, already we know that there's Vulture in the MCU. Technically, because of the Netflix downstreaming, we have Wilson Fisk, but that's yet to be determined whether or not they're actually going to bring that in the MCU. So we'll, we won't count that one. But we have, for instance, Scorpion is there, who's been a member of the Sinister Six before. We know Mysterio is now there, who has been a member of the 66. Sinister Six before. The Prowler has been a member of the Sinister Six in the Ultimate Comics. We know that um, Shocker is there, who has been a member of the Sinister Six in the past. Um, we have a large portion of the Sinister Six team already there. Um, and then we have people that are suppliers, like the Tinkerer, who can then share the Chitari technology or adapted Chit Chitari technology, alien tech, which is very likely probably where Mysterio got his tech because Tinkerer was never dealt with in Homecoming. He disappeared. So uh, he's still out there supplying, doing his thing. And someone I think is probably um, sending Mysterio to steal Stark tech. It's probably likely what's happening since Stark is no longer there. Probably shift in power. Pepper Potts is running the thing. Obviously her signature was on that big giant check in the trailer. It was Pepper Potts' signature, not Happy Hogan's. And it wasn't Tony's either. So she's got control of Stark, Stark Enterprises at this time. And so like, there's so much that could be happening. Overstuffing with, with characters you think would be a problem, but after seeing Infinity War, Civil War, Endgame, uh, even Black Panther had a lot, of, a lot of people in it. There's a lot of movies that we've seen where now it's like, it doesn't really matter how many characters you have in a film if you do it right, if you know how to prioritize the storyline. You can have many characters, but if you stick to a singular story, you'll be fine. Don't have multiple storylines, just have multiple characters in one storyline and you'll be okay. Absolutely, and so I, I, agree, I agree with that. There's there's also something that, that we should probably address when it comes to how many characters and, and, and properties and all of that is and that's Sony. I mean, we all know yeah. it's it's common knowledge that Sony definitely owns Spider Man. It's only a tender mercy that they're allowing Marvel to kind of do their kind their thing. And that's actually yes. where a big part of my, my theories come from because I really think we're gonna see a merge. And I think we're gonna see a merge for the for the better at least this yeah. is what i hope because i want because honestly dude everybody bags on on garfield's performance and his movies i did Andrew not garfield. mind them i did not mind the garfield movies the second no, one I not didn't mind so it. much but like 
I was I was pretty stoked on on a Sinister Six when we saw all those lineup of all the costumes and everything. I was just Heck so, yeah. I was so pumped on that. And even though Jamie Dude, Fox yes. was just like oh my god, I wasn't feeling Jamie Fox. It doesn't change right. the fact of how excited I was for that. Even Paul Giamatti in the Rhino, dude. That was, I mean, I was digging it. Yeah. And and a part of me still wants to see that. Sony still owns all of that stuff. Who's to say that that can't happen? Here's a crazy theory for you. I mean, we're talking villains and everything. We know that Sony's gonna like gonna continue with Venom because of the success right. there. We know that they're doing a Morbius movie. There you go. They, right. We know that there's talks of a Silk movie, which isn't a villain. It's it's actually a protagonist, a, like a, a female Spider-Man, which would be so cool. But right. I don't really think Sony's going to settle on on her being the main main protagonist. I think they're going to, to one day bring back Spider-Man. Now, here's yes. the craziest thing out of all of this. This is so like so many people will look like like just raise an eyebrow uh, towards this, but like the black Spider-Man uh, that we see in in Far From Home, uh, the the kind of noir costume with the goggles right. and everything, we don't know who's wearing that. We have no idea. Like we never see we never see Peter put it on. We never see him take it off. We never see that it's him wearing it. We know that Magneto is from or magneto uh mysterio is from another uh multiverse he's from a different earth he's not from this earth he's from a different one who's i mean who's to say that he got out of that one to get out of the spider the noir spider-man who's his spider-man you know and and him swindle his way into ours lying about who he is and him being a mentor kind of like another dad iron man figure to peter to try and right. do and and here's the craziest part is that the flash tv series where earbot earbot tharn comes in and becomes the mentor to barry allen what if right. that's happening what if he comes in from another multiverse to kind of mess up the other uh the other spider-man and then we see this noir spider-man what if that becomes what if they swap what if they either swap what if tom holland swings over to the sony verse stays there and we keep the new noir spider-man i mean yeah kind of crazy but like both studios win because they're both and i'm not saying they're both gonna be played by by uh tom, tom holland i mean we could get new stuff and and tom holland dropping dropping uh <laughs> freaking spoiler bombs like crazy talking about trilogy movies Right. Never really talked about what studio he was talking about. We know that Venom has been in the talks of maybe rumored in Far From Home, which I totally don't believe. But, like, I really think that we will one day see Spider-Man come back into the Sony-verse. Well, who's to say that the multiverse wouldn't be the best way to do that? Right, and I, I totally I love that theory. That's a lot of fun. It's interesting point bringing up that we haven't seen – who is in the black suit? It's an assumption. Um, I want to. That makes me want to go back and rewatch the the trailers. Like yeah. look for moments if he like pulls it off or something. But like that's that's a really valid like valid point there. But what I want to add to this, and this is kind of more along the lines of my theory here, is that with um, with Spider Man uh, Far From Home, we've already you and I have already established that there is no reason to trust Mysterio. He is clearly a bad guy. That's in his character. But what all what else is also in his character is that he is from our earth. He is from our continuity. I believe that as we've already discussed, the multiverse does 100% exist and it existed before all of this. We, it was first brought up in Doctor Strange. And then we learned about the microverse. We learned about, you know, like the, uh, or the, uh, what's it called? The quantum realm. Quantum we learned about all these other things that are inside of the MCU already without the use of the stones. But, I believe maybe there was a breach, but he did not come through it. He is still from Earth. He is a liar. He is a deceiver. The multiverse does in fact exist, but that's not what happened. He's lying and he's, he's lying. lying to S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. He's lying, he's lying to S.H.I.E.L.D. He's from Earth and he's using that as a double cover to make it kind of quiet the fact that he would be from Earth. So 
Like if he's it's like kind of like a Captain dimension. Marvel situation where we saw Marvel lying about the fact that she was human, except for she was right. a good guy, and that's interesting. I like that theory. That's kind of cool. I think I think there is a there is a multiverse. He's not from it. Hmm. And another another theory that would still line up because I, I I do think that you know it's not even really a debate whether the multiverse exists or not. We know that it does. Doctor Strange. That's already done. That's settled. People are still discussing like it, it, it is or is not or it might or it might not be. Yeah. But the question really is how will that be used or will it even be used? So that that to me is like this could be a huge part of him taking advantage of the whole world being devastated, PTSD, broken hearted. They mourn their losses and now they have their people back. They're, tr they're caught in like tragedy and overwhelmed with emotion. If he just says he was from another universe and the snap ripped him over here, who's to say that that didn't happen except that he is still lying about it, you know? Yeah. Because it didn't really rip a hole in a universe. It just brought people back that were already there. That was all the snap was used for. So unless they're going to go that direction and say that because that much power was exerted, it did in fact rip a hole unintentionally, hmm. then okay, you can do that. I certainly don't think that's how mutants are getting in here. I think that that will frustrate a lot of people. And I think that the Russos are probably smarter than that. They've all, like I've said, they've already, you know, in one of my videos before, if you guys haven't seen it, it's the uh, mutants in the MCU explain. They've already laid the groundwork for mutants in the MCU. They're already there. If you guys aren't, don't know what I'm talking about, you check out my video. I'll explain it to you really quick. But nevertheless, they're already there. It's just a matter of, how many of them probably already had their mutants powers in existence and were they just laying low? Or, like for instance, Doctor Strange, was he laying low? Yes, a little bit. Black Panther, was he laying low? An entire country was laying low. Captain Marvel, was she laying low? She just wasn't here. Spider-Man, was he laying low? Yes, but no, he was also on the news. So like, we don't, the thing about movies is that we don't really get to know about the characters until they tell us about the characters. So characters exist all around the planet. Superhero beings, powered individuals, mutants. They all exist. We just don't hear their stories because that's not the stories we're being told. So until we get a movie about Ant-Man, we didn't know that Hank Pym is, existed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He existed. So true. We didn't know he existed. So it doesn't mean that they have to explain where every mutant has been in history. They just tell us a story and tell us where they've been. It's that simple. Well, the same you know? same goes with the comic books as well because in in Avengers versus X Men, uh, I love that one, dude. Right, my favorite. That's my favorite. Right, and I really think that we're gonna see that too. I really think that's gonna be the civil war of the next of the next. I don't know what to call this next ge MCU generation. Whatever this next, because it's not right. phase. I bet we see phase six. I bet we see that. Uh, Avengers. Dude, yeah, we're probably gonna see like phase twelve something something like that but like in, in that uh emma frost uh frost uh, yeah. is, a, is approached by one of the avengers and just like well if you guys are so powerful and you, and you believe in this and blah 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 where the heck have you been and she said something right. and i don't necessarily like her but i i really like what she said and she's like we have our own problems to deal with we fight with each yeah. other all the freaking time and i was like yeah, yeah. that's so true because the x-men are like they are messed up and they fight each other all the time they are worried about their own battles who's to say that that's not how uh, like how we see them at, who's to say that that's what's been going on this whole time that's a whole different thing this is spider-man right now and they've taken yeah. very good care of spider-man because like yes. they didn't give us his origin we didn't need his origin and and, yeah. and what i'm trying to get at with that is that they 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 know what the fans want and and with your theory when it comes to uh, memento being bad that is what the fans want they want to see a bad memento they know that you he mysterio? lies but sorry <laughs> mysterio <laughs> thank you yeah. um, yes with with that like they know that he lies they want to see that they are going to give us that i think it's really yeah. interesting that you say that he lied about a being from the mul from a different multiverse from a different earth the thing with that, and I don't have a problem with it, it's just something that we can talk about, is that like he would have to be somebody who is aware of that. So does that mean that you think the multiverse is is something that everyone is aware of? Or is it just a few? Because it made it seem like Nick Fury 
was keeping it very under wraps and he t- it, it, they were like in a tunnel with with laptops and russians talking to each other and it's just like and there's a multiverse you know it's not like they shouted it from a rooftop what if this is privileged information wouldn't mysterio wouldn't he have to be a privileged person to know that kind of information two things um not necessarily because my another theory that i have is that he is not the main bad guy there is a bad guy that is above him pulling the strings he will be the primary bad guy we see in the film but he's not the brains of the operation there is someone bigger than him Hmm. that is seeking to take and utilize start tech they must be someone that's it's probably very likely this is where like theories get really deep the avengers tower was sold in homecoming they never identified the buyer and they did this on purpose. I have a video about this and I think we've talked about this before. We That's have. actually how we met was you sought me out about my my homecoming theories. So Yeah, it is so sick. And then you and I did one on our on ours uh, on yeah. my channel uh, about the whole like crossover event and and here we are a year later by the way. Just want to point that out. Right. Yeah, a year later, dude. It's a, it's amazing what can happen in just a year, dude. Our friendship has surely blossomed. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> But like the gist of what I was gonna say was the if if it's gonna be like if it's gonna be like tying in really wrap keeping the spirit of Homecoming as a trilogy or as a series within itself like you have to be able to tell stories that are within themselves they call back to themselves they feed off of the past yeah. you know like that kind of stuff is beautiful for fans and it's great for nostalgia it's great for just getting people hyped so obviously they've shown buildings giant buildings that are under construction in the trailers obviously this is most likely i can't say obviously but it's most likely the avengers tower being redone or rebuilt and if if that's the case it's got to be someone that's as rich as tony stark or darn close or has the funds that would be similar so people that i can think of off the top of my head that might be this rich powerful manipulative strategic Um, able to get things done would be either a Wilson Fisk who is originally a Spider-Man villain not Daredevil absolutely B uh, Norman Osborn who is that rich that powerful that that strategic intelligent can I we haven't seen yet in the MCU or Spider-Man exactly and Wilson Fisk we have but it was downstream of the MCU in the Netflix universe yes so that was it's in the MCU, quote unquote, but it's downstream. So unless they want to draft that guy, which I don't think they will, at least not yet, because there's a two year waiting period from when the shows get canceled on Netflix to when you can actually use them again. So I don't think it's been that long. Not enough time to put him in the film. It would be uh, amazing, I don't think that's dude. It would be amazing. We've already geeked over oh, all this yes. stuff. It would be freaking, Vincent D'Onofrio, dude, we freaking killed it. I would love to see him in there. Yeah. Even if it's Absolutely. just a small shout out to the Netflix verse, not even saying that it's continuity, just the fact right. that he's there, I I would love that. Anyway, sorry. No worries. Yeah. Other another another couple people I think that it could be possibly, which might involve other characters being there. But you talk about like, um, okay, yeah, you talk about uh, Doctor Octopus. Traditionally, he works for other people that are more intelligent, yeah. but he would have to get funding from someone else like Norman Osborn, who doesn't have to be the Green Goblin, just has to still be manipulative, conniving, trying to run for office or something mm-hmm. like that. And Dr. Octopus is his guy until he gets betrayed. So he could theoretically be working for Oscorp at that time, and we could be looking at Dr. Octopus pulling the strings um, for Mysterio. Another option, probably like a crime boss that is wealthy, powerful. Hammerhead might be that guy. Um, you never know. Yeah, lots and lots of options. So I, th- I think on- I think personally it could possibly be uh, the Fantastic Four. And now, yeah, that was the other option was that, like you said, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four yeah. could be that option. Now I don't think they'll show the Fantastic yeah. Four, but they might mention that it's being Just renamed the to the Baxter Building. Yes, and so that's very likely too. But for the spirit of connecting those two theories that I presented, is that I think it'll be a villain. It'll be someone that has it out to to gain power to control the city to control the crime it's probably going to be norman osborne that is the most likely um given the 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 rights that are still wavering right now whether or not they're going to continue to use the netflix characters in that universe or if they're going to create a new wilson fisk what are they going to bother with that or are they just going to say hey let's use norman osborne because that fits anyway 
probably him, could be the Fantastic Four, we don't know. And that might not even be relevant to the, the villain theory, but Mysterio probably isn't the mastermind. If he is, I'll be a little surprised. Not that big of a stretch if he's the guy and he's just got some henchmen like Hydro Man, Molten Man, and Sandman uh, in there, which we've seen in the trailers already. Um, so there's at least those three guys plus Mysterio. It's clearly a group operation, and I don't think he's the brains. I think he is the face of the operation. So, um, because he's the guy, he's the great deceiver. So he'll be able to pull the wool over people's eyes. And I think that it's probably not Nick Fury. It's actually probably um, Chameleon. I think it's Chameleon is yeah. Nick Fury and it's not him. That's why he's like, it's finally nice. It's nice to finally meet you, Spider-Man. You'd think that he would have known Spider-Man before they were at the funeral together in Endgame. Obviously, he was in the back. He was still being slick and sly. So it's possible that they never That's a good shook point. hands. That's a good point. Because I were... was about to say, I was about to chime in and say, well, he hasn't met him yet. But then again, there was the funeral. So that is that is true. They were both there at the funeral. Of course, he probably met him. That's neither here or there. But like, it is interesting. Right. Chameleon, it could be a possibility. The thing is, is that... Is that something that you would want to see? I feel like that'd be a cop out because we want we we like Nick Fury, we like Samuel we L. Jackson, and and so like having him be the Spider Man equivalent to a scroll would kind of suck, you know? Like it would just I don't know. I mean, it could it could suck, or you could have both guys in there. So like you might have Nick Fury showing up to fight fake Nick Fury, and then reveal that it's actually chameleon that's something that actually happened in uh the spider-man animated series in the 90s that's actually how i learned about the character chameleon was because he infiltrated shield and pretended to be nick fury for a time until nick fury realized there's another nick fury walking around doing my job and then he was actually stealing information from shield and that's how they were able to learn about a lot of the secrets from shield from the world that they were living in get you know get uh, technology and that kind of thing. So it would make sense if it's a group operation that there's someone that really is the brains behind the operation that's known for being the brains behind the operation more right. so than Mysterio. Right. Yeah. Good point. Interesting yeah. theory. The this is this is what I think. And, and I mean, I personally think that the multiverse is going to be a huge. There's been a lot of people who've been talking about Madam Web too. By the way, I don't think. Oh she's, please, yes. I don't think she's gonna happen, <laughs> but. I don't understand Probably Madam not. Web. I don't understand her. But like multiverse, Spider Verse, really uh, is is something that fans love. And I'm not referring to the Into the Spider Verse movie, animated movie. I'm talking about the concept of the fact that there are multiple different different Spider Men and all of that kind of stuff. People love that. It's a pretty huge pillar of the Spider Man lore uh when it comes to his comic books and even cartoon series i mean there was a lot of that i i think possibly the way that they introduce the multiverse to us is is a sort of spider into the spider verse sorry spider verse-esque kind of feel and and we're seeing multiple spider-men and that's why we see multiple suits uh in there who knows that's that's my personal theory but like who's to say i mean yeah, we got an overload of of uh, villains that I thought they balanced really, really well in Homecoming. I really liked that. Some people didn't. Um, but, like, I like what you're saying, that they could possibly do the same thing again, bring in Chameleon, make him... I mean, Nick Fury and all of that. I love the idea of more villains. So yeah. why not, with more villains, why not throw in more Spider-Man. Superhero. Yeah, more Spider-Man. That I I feel like that would be a cool mix between our two theories. That'd be kind of that'd be kind of neat. Yeah. Sp- you know, it'd specifically be because like it could mean a lot of potential for a lot of other stuff. For sure. And you know what would be extra savage is if Marvel decided to make that what you just said like where it's a, it is a multiverse. There's villains like so many villains more so than Spider-Man can handle. So then the, the multiverse Spider-Man that come back are Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Garfield needs to come back, dude. Like, seriously? I dude, lo- for sure. Like, I love Holland. Don't get me wrong. I like Tom Holland. I personally think that Garfield did it better. 
I'm just yeah. gonna say it. I think he did. He did the sarcasm better. I, he did. I, he, he did the jokes I love, better. I just think he did it better. I think. I think uh, Andrew Garfield in the suit was better than to- than Tobey Maguire. But Tobey Maguire out of the suit, as awkward as he was, I think did a better job of capturing what Peter felt like in the comics and in the in the animated series and all that stuff because yeah. he was never he was never like the ADD spaz and that's kind of what he was going for Andrew Garfield in his take yeah. the Mark Webb version because it was it it had to feel different you can't just do apples for apples you have to make yourself unique and so they went with this modern take on what a youth really would be like now especially if he was like hopped up on spider venom and i so, freaking loved that i thought that was i thought that was the most brilliant so many people walked out of the theater and was just like oh what he's a skater punk now like spider-man he's not a nerd i'm like no like yeah. that's how freaking nerds are nowadays they are super recluse and 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 introverted and do their own kind of yeah. thing like and that's what nice choice of words right there with recluse <laughs> i just i i don't know i just like the garfield version man like i like garfield I thought he yeah. did a re- really good job, and and I would I if dude if it's really Garfield uh, I mean it's not but if it's Garfield underneath the black noir costume I will lose my freaking mind that would be freaking amazing, bro everyone will lose their mind it's like if if that is what they're where they're going with that and maybe maybe like all these villains have poured through because of the multiverse, but his answer to that is to tap back into the multiverse and pull out some help. How amazing would that be that like you could get that? I mean, they could basically play it like a live action into the Spider-Verse where you have like the Spider-Man that's like super well put together doing it right. Then you have the Spider-Man that's like all messed up and janky. You could have to- Tobey Maguire play the janky old messed up version. Yes. And then you could have to- Andrew Garfield come in like this like hot like, oh, dude, I got it going on. What's up? I know my I know the moves and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to- Tom Holland, who's just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is crazy, this is geeking out, you know, and like all that stuff. It'd be so, Dude, it would so be, sick. It would be amazing if they had the budget, which I mean, it's the MCU. I'm sure they have the. Well, technically, I mean, I don't know. Is it Sony paying for this, or is it is it Marvel? I think it's Marvel. But uh, Marvel, I mean, Marvel pays for it, and Sony rakes in the cash. There you go. See, I, I don't know, and it would only make Sony look better, to be honest. It would. It would. It, it would, would be, be a beautiful tribute to the, their legacy you know and and, and so cool. even though we're talking theories now we're just talking about fan service there's nothing wrong with fan service i would it love kind of ties in i would l- freaking love fan service in a spider-man movie because that's that's yeah. honestly that's what people want like people just wanted right. more they were all so mad when spider-man died in infinity war and when he came back that was some of that was some of everybody's yeah. favorite parts of the movie but like right i would love to see more spider-man that would be awesome theories dude there the movie comes out when in in a few days from now um, yeah, let me just let me just double check. I wanted to make sure I got the exact. It. I'm pretty stoked because it just means so much more for the MCU in general. I'm I'm pumped. It comes out July second, 2019, which is very 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 soon. Perfect. So it's like what? Two, is that two weeks away? I think so. Because today, I think that's two weeks. Today is the 19th of June. Okay. Yeah. So pretty darn close. We're. That's not far, dude. I'm so excited. If Endgame comes out very soon and we we have that extended scene, you know, the deleted scene, and then at the end we have the end credit scene, I can't not see that again before I go see Homecoming because what if it's pertinent? You yeah, know, like, what no, that's if? a good point. That it's like, I must point. see it. I must see it again, and I must have Endgame <laughs> beat the crap out of Avatar because it is about time someone stepped up to the plate and smacked that out of the park dude it it, it, it needs to happen it for sure does and i'm gonna do a shameless plug here uh at my channel you and i talked about a lot about that um in mm-hmm. in this same sitting actually I'm, i mean we're gonna pull the curtain back a little bit and tell right. everybody how it's done here we recorded another one right before this talking about uh the extended cut of avengers that is coming out very soon and right on my channel we're doing the fandom initiative 2 part deuce where we get super pumped up for avengers and i think that's it's pretty cool that the extended version is coming out right before uh our fandom initiative 2 so join in on sunday 
for that premiered event. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Be we there. Always, every, be there, Sunday. Everyone check it out. Nerdy Blurb TV on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Um, he's got all kinds of great content. He's always tweeting. He's a lot of fun to follow. Probably even more so than anybody you know. A lot of fun, lots of fun polls, questions, interrogations. I love engaging with you. We've gotten into so many fun arguments about stuff, about movies and which ones suck and don't. So if you like to have a good time out there on social media, follow Nerdy Blurb TV on all platforms. And then also check him out. Check out the video that we just did together in another dimension. And um, at, nerd, over at Nerdy Blurb TV through the portal. So follow that rabbit trail. Go check him out. I'll probably put the link to the description of that, or the link to that in the description of this video. So you guys can get there pretty easily. And anyways, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on board. This was an awesome discussion about what could happen, what's going to be, and how do you feel about Far From Home. So uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Dude, it's always a pleasure to be here. So thank you. Yeah, dude. Well, anyways, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a th thumbs up. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't and turn on notifications to be alerted right away when I go live next time. That way you guys won't miss a single thing. And again, subscribe to Nerdy Blurb TV. Get some sick merch sometimes if he's doing a promo or something like that. It's going to have to happen eventually, dude. It I will. It will definitely have to happen now. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. I'm like, I'm putting you on the spot right here. But anyways... Uh, you guys, check him out. Subscribe to the channel. He's got the best editing on YouTube, hands down, no exceptions. Check that out. You're not going to be disappointed. And uh, check out the Phantom Initiative this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> and kids, these are just five bucks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh, I'll see you guys next time right here on the Stuff of Legend and over at Nerdy Blurb TV. Thank you, guys. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.